All right, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you very much for being here. My name is Robert Brown, and I have the honor of serving as the assistant city manager. Our city manager, Mr. Doug Fence, is on vacation, and he will be returning tomorrow, so that is the reason he is not here today. Uh, I want to thank you, first of all, for, for being here, because it certainly shows your interest in how we hire our next police chief and fire chief. The city of Duncanville has been really fortunate because we have had the pleasure of having, in my view, outstanding police chiefs and outstanding fire chiefs. Um, when I applied for the job back in 2007, one of the things that intrigued me about the city of Duncanville was the tenure of their police chiefs and fire chiefs. Uh, we've enjoyed long tenures. I have the pleasure of serving in the role for 14 years. And the average tenure of a police chief is three to five years. You know, our tenure is very short. So that's very appealing, hopefully, to candidates who may be interested in applying for this job. Our police chief, Mark Levigny, recently retired after 30 years of service to this community. Uh, I had the pleasure of promoting Mark to assistant chief, and I really enjoyed serving this community with Mark. And he retired in January of this year. Our fire chief, Sam Roding, served this community for almost 40 years, and Sam will be retiring uh, at the end of this month, in April. And so now we have this opportunity to advertise and select two very key department heads for this city. And the city of Duncanville has partnered with T2 Consulting and Mr. Wilson to conduct the searches for us. And so here in just a second, uh, Mr. Wilson is gonna guide you through that process, but we're very fortunate to have him. Mr. Wilson and his company also did our search for our city manager. And we were very pleased with that search. And one of the things that we were really pleased about was the promptness and the communication from this organization. I think if you were to ask any of our council members, they were very pleased with the updates that they got from Mr. Wilson and his company. And so at this time, I'm gonna turn it over to Mr. Mike Wilson, and he will talk about the process. Hello, good evening. Can y'all hear me in the very back? If, if so, I'm not going to use the microphone to blow you out. <laughs> you know, I uh, thank you, uh, Ms., Mr. Brown. It's an honor to partner with the city of Duncanville. I really enjoy working with you all, meeting people, uh, you know, starting to build relationships. When we were going through the process for the city manager, what I learned, there's a lot of passion. You know, the... Uh, uh, Sorry, <laughs> apparently I'm on camera. <laughs> you know, the uh, term city of champions or, or championship city, you know, that, that, that's true. There's a lot of pride here. And, uh, you know, we're honored to be able to be at this really critical point to be able to help you find a city manager and now your public safety officials, your police, and your fire chief. Uh, so the purpose of tonight is to talk about our process, how we go about things, answer any questions that you, you all may have, but then we're going to talk about what I'm going to ask from you, which is for you to complete a job survey specific to the fire chief and police chief positions. I want to go through those questions. I want to share with you what I'm looking for as far as a perspective that I would like you to answer those questions from. Now this is important. You'll hear me talk about our benchmarking process. It all starts here. I've spent this week meeting with your firefighters, meeting with your police officers, getting their input, asking them to do the same thing from the same perspective. What we do with all of that data that's going to come in is it's gonna be analyzed and that's gonna create a baseline for our benchmark committees that should meet next Friday on the 3rd. Once a benchmark is complete, that guides everything Effectively, we are creating the ideal candidate profile for police chief 
and fire chief. We're not going off of what worked in Dallas or what might have worked in another city. Duncanville is unique. You have a unique demographic. You have unique challenges. You have unique dreams as a city. You have your own sets of goals and you have your own set of community culture and organizational culture. So I want to make sure that you thoroughly understand the process that we follow and why we follow that process. Everything we do is data driven. It's all based and rooted around the behavior sciences. And we do that to eliminate and or reduce personal bias. Nothing we do is going to be about the name of a person or whether we've worked with them or not worked with them. You guys will tell us what competencies and what attributes you're looking for in this position. And then we put to work our tools to assess these candidates as they move through the uh, process. Any questions before I get going? We were going to have visuals, uh, <clears throat> a bad HDM, HDMI line. However, Alex assured me they're gonna be posting this uh, to different sources for people to view. Along with that, there's some QR codes, I'll talk about that, and some links that I'll ask you guys to uh, uh, engage with once, once we're done. The survey, and I'll repeat this a few times, it will be open until 8 a.m. Saturday morning. So <clears throat> when you leave here, uh, we wanna give you time to complete it. We wanna give you time to talk to your friends, your neighbors, share that information, and give them time to complete the survey. It doesn't take a long time. The average length on the survey has been about six or seven minutes. So I'm not asking for a huge commitment. I'm just asking for a commitment to engage. All right, so why are we here? Number one, we're working to clarify the priorities for the executive team for the police chief and the fire chief positions. Now, when I talk about priorities, I'm talking about what are the results that the new chiefs have to bring to succeed in Duncanville. What does it take to succeed as a police chief or fire chief in the city of Duncanville? We'll start broad, and then I'm gonna start asking you to narrow that down and be really specific. And I want you to respond and get in the mindset, not as maybe a city volunteer, but as a resident. And if you're a resident that grew up in the city, and experienced a lot of transitions, what is that perspective? I'm sure each of you have seen good, bad, and the ugly in a lot of ways, right? Whenever I'm talking to employees and we're talking about what's your ideal boss, a lot of times they're gonna bring up a name, right? Somebody they really liked. And I tell them, I don't want names, but if that person, by whatever name, really was a great leader, or you would follow them through a brick wall, what behaviors did they demonstrate? What activities did they engage in? What made them that person for you? So I'm gonna ask you the same thing, the exact same question, but you have a different perspective, right? You, you're a community member being served who's receiving police services and fire services from the city. You may be engaged as uh, volunteers, whether it's for police or fire. So you also have that perspective. My goal is I want a 360 degree view of these jobs, because it's important. What happens if we don't have effective leadership in those two critical roles? A lot of bad things, right? These are, you know, not saying that any one position is more important in a city. These are two pretty important positions because they provide for quality of life, they provide for welfare, they provide for life safety. And in any city, what are our number one priorities? Number one, it's always life safety, right? And then we move to quality of life and move on through. The second reason we're here, by providing that clarity to the executive team, now we're able to provide clarity to whoever selected. It's really important when a person comes into a position that they know what success looks like. Would we all agree? And they need to know what success doesn't look like because results matter. 
It all, not only matters in this case to the city, to the departments, but it matters to the folks that are selected. We want them to be successful. We want them to be that long tenured leader in these departments that brings us stability, that are just fixtures in our community. Third, spoke about this, removing or reducing bias. I'm gonna ask you tonight, if you have questions or when we start going through the questions, people's names are gonna pop in your brain. And you're gonna be, oh, they were awesome. We wanna be soft on names and people, but we wanna be hard on, deal, on ideas. This is your opportunity. Create the perfect profile in your mind of what those leaders look like for those departments. Because you know what you need. And what Duncanville needs today might not be what Duncanville needed five years ago. But again, you have, you know the challenges and you have your dreams and you have your goals of where you'd like the city to go. Any questions? And then finally, we'll take all of that, as I said, that will become the foundation as we start working with our benchmark committees. Our benchmark committees are comprised of subject matter experts. So we'll have members of each department from the executive level, mid-level, frontline supervision, members uh, if they have respective associations that represent the, gen the general body, we'll have civilian employees represented, and there's also gonna be uh, a citizen representation on the benchmark. Again, we want the 360 uh, view on this. As we go through that process, we're starting to identify priorities. Those priorities we refer to as superior performance attributes. And we're trying to identify three to five. And we're going to try to be as specific as we possibly can. One of those priorities, if we're going to pick on the police department, might be we want to reduce crime X in the city. Well, if that's your response on a result, <clears throat> my question to you is going to be by doing what? What is the chief going to do to help reduce crime X by whatever? Because that's a priority, and those are going to be subtasks and subpoints that are going to be laid out. What you're also going to be asked to define is what high value activities should these leaders be engaging in? Meaning 60% of their time, they need to be doing this, 70% that, because we have to define that as well. We have to define the appropriate roadmap for success for them, because if they're successful based on this benchmark, then guess who else is successful? The city, the troops. Any questions? So, by the end of this session, as we wrap up, I'll ask you to uh, at least take down the links or scan the QR code for the surveys and have that completed by Saturday morning at 8. And then next week, we move in, we'll complete our benchmark committees. We hope to, uh, we will have the benchmark by that following Monday. I'll review it against uh, the responses from the collective groups because what I want to make sure is that we have a good benchmark. And what I'm looking for is congruence. Is the feedback received from you all and from the employees consistent with what we're seeing with the benchmark? If there's inconsistencies, I'll do some follow-up. If I need to go back to the benchmark or if I need to go back to the different groups or reach out for some clarity, then we'll do that. We have to make sure we have a good benchmark. Once we finalize that benchmark with executive leadership in the city, the decision-making authority, then that will then be used to modify job descriptions, if it's necessary. Once that's done, then we go to advertise. My goal is to start advertising by uh, the middle of May, at the latest, the third week. And we'll advertise through the basic government dashboard, so GovJobs, <coughs> TML, if there's, you know, there's also association-specific uh, job boards uh, that police chiefs go or fire chiefs go to see postings and then we'll also push it out through social media platforms 
So we'll push it out to the city's platforms, the department's platforms, my platforms, and uh, we'll advertise. The intent is to advertise for 30 days. We found to be very successful in those periods of time. And we found to have a pretty strong reach uh, with your city manager search. We pulled candidates from the four corners of the uh, nation. So we were really pleased with that response. <clears throat> by the 37th day, all assignments should be completed by the candidates. So as resumes come in, I'm pushing out assignments to them. And they're going to have to answer a series of questions that are derived from the benchmark. And I give them a week. So I say the 37th day. So if I get a resume or an applicant on that 30th day, I've got to give them time to complete that task. Once that's done, then we start narrowing down to our top candidates. We hope to have about five, three to five top candidates. And that will be done in conjunction with uh, the city manager, his staff, and whoever else he involves. Once we have the top candidates, then those candidates are going to be assessed using our trimetrics. So the trimetrics is a comprehensive uh, assessment. It's a patented process. It's been administered over decades. It found its fame in the private sector, a lot of Fortune 100 companies and 500 companies, and then it spread to the government sector, federal levels, state levels, and now the local government. The unique thing about the trimetrics is that it's all science-based and it's all science-validated. And it's continuously validated because it's EEOC compliant. The benchmark, as we benchmark a job, what we're doing is we're identifying what talents are necessary to succeed in this job. There's about 25 human talents. We're identifying how that job motivates people. Because a job will motivate a person in one form or fashion. That's why people are passionate about doing one thing. And like me, there's no way I want to dig a trench. That just doesn't motivate me. And then the third, what behaviors are necessary to succeed in that job? <clears throat> and all of that is measured, and all of that is rated, and all of that is identified. And we're looking at the top seven talents, we're looking at the top three drivers, and we're looking at the top three or four behaviors. With that benchmark, as we get the results from the candidate's assessment, we're looking for the best fit. How close are they to the desired talents, behaviors, and motivators. <clears throat> because we're measuring through that trimetrics, what are your natural talents? What are your natural motivations? And what are your natural behaviors? Because that's important. The great thing about this is it cuts through the traditional hiring process, where we look at a resume, we bring them in for a couple of interviews, we make a selection and oh, 18 months, I don't know if we made a good choice. I've made good hires, I've made bad hires. I've made good promotions and I've made bad promotions when I was a chief. And it got me thinking, this person I thought was gonna be a rock star. Why did that not happen? Well, because it's, how many times if you've hired a person and they walked in and said, hey, I was uh, fired for poor performance. <laughs> Does that happen much? What do people usually say in interviews? All the positive. Look at what I did. I grew sales or I did this or I did that, right? We don't talk about the negative. If you go through interviewing classes, they don't tell you, hey, include all the bad stuff on, on your resume. They might even tell you use key terms because they're using some type of algorithm to get you past the uh, screening. Well, this is different. What we find out are the things that people don't necessarily tell us in a resume or in an interview. So we're measuring their natural talents, behaviors, and the natural ways that they're motivated. And it's really easy because it's color coded. If it's blue, they're excellent. And I need color, I need color code. If they're green, they're a good match. If they're yellow, they're fair. If they're red, they're a poor match. If it's white, they're not being honest because we also have that built in. So <clears throat> once we get their results, then we compare it to the job benchmark. And I'm looking at 
whose natural talents, behaviors, and motivators closest fit the benchmark. And we use this to help us weed down to our final candidates, along with the other two pieces. This only accounts typically for about 30%, but it's a good tool for us to see clarity in some, di in some different areas. And then we can conduct follow-up interviews, follow-up questions to see if that response is just situational or is that how they are in their common state? Is it truly their natural response to things? Once we have those final candidates, there will be an interview process. We'll be finalizing if there will be meet and greet, public presentations, or, or what have you along with that process. That will be up to the city manager and his team uh, to lay that out. Uh, <clears throat> you know, we were just talk, uh, talking about that. There's a lot of ways, there's a lot of unique ways where you can continue to, to engage the uh, community. So you had feedback, and so the, the employees have feedback throughout the uh, process. And then ultimately the city manager will make their choice, and that choice will have to be confirmed by city council. So are there any questions about that process or the tools that we use? I have a short question now. Sure. Um, let's play what if. What if the responses you receive are only these people in this room? How do you build benchmarks from just, you know, 30 people, 40 people? Right, so it's not just 30 or 40 people that I'll be getting responses. I'm already getting responses from PD. Uh, I'm already getting responses from fire. So, you know, collectively, you know, we'll just have the best sampling we have. And that's a piece of it. The other piece is the work that's being done by the benchmark committee. The work that will be done by the benchmark committee, they've got to do a lot of heavy lifting. Because as we go through the exercises and we get to the end, they get to take about an hour and a half long job quiz. And it's a very intensive. That's why the construct of that committee is what it is. Because we want everything reflective of the entire community throughout the entire process. That's why we met with the troops first and you all. That's why the benchmark committee has all different elements of the community represented within that benchmark committee. Longer answer to a short question. Thank you. Any other questions? Can I comment? I think you're gonna have a lot of people just see it from the city website. Uh, like the informer that I just came out today, I want to scan I didn't take the time to fill it, but I've already looked over yep. the, uh, the interview process. Sorry, right. uh, and pretty self-explanatory, right? If, if you can't do it, you don't need to be giving your opinion. <laughs> I, you uh, <laughs> just because this character in the Geico commercials has started becoming popular again, so easy a caveman can do it. Uh, what I would like to do now is I want to go through the questions. Uh, and I want to share with you what I'm looking for in the response to the questions. Uh, feel free to, uh, if, if there's any confusion or you need to see clarification, stop me, ask me, and we'll, and we'll talk about it. Okay? <clears throat> what you're going to hear time and time again is I need detail and I need you to be specific. As, as specific as you can. Also, when you're responding to these, respond as a citizen. Respond based on maybe experiences or uh, uh, desires and, and those things or what you think. Because at the end of the day, if you want to have a safe community and high quality of life, it takes us all, right? It takes everybody involved in that process. Um, you know, there's a lot of uh, traditional policing principles that still apply today by Sir Robert Peel, the father of modern day policing. You know, and, and one that just resonates, the police are the public and the public are the police. What does that mean? We all have a stake, right? We all have a stake in the safety of our community, as an example. Uh, and I, the same applies when we're talking about fire. We all have a stake in the safety when it comes to fire services. Uh, so the first question uh, I'll ask you is from your perspective, what must happen for the new chief to succeed in the city of Duncan? Broad question, right? Is it a question for both fire and police? Both fire and police, same questions. Two separate surveys. 
Same questions. Very broad question. I want a specific response. That, that's easy, <laughs> easy, right? So if, if, if we're talking about, uh, you know, fire, speed up inspections. Maybe you're a business owner, and that's something important to you. Well, okay, that's pretty broad. What are we talking about from the fire chief perspective? Speed up inspections by, and tell me your thoughts. How can they speed that up? If we're talking about reducing crime, again, reduce crashes. How? From your perspective. By doing this. Maybe by putting officers at these intersections where crashes already occur. Does that make sense? So I know I'm asking you a broad question. Don't give me a, uh, a broad answer. You know, so I got the easy part on this one. The second question, identifying clear results that lead to, to success in a job is important. What results must you see as an individual <clears throat> to know the chief is succeeding in his or her role? What results do you have to see? So if you're sitting at your kitchen table or you're talking to your neighbor saying they're doing a good job, what do you have to see? The third question, why are the above mentioned results important to you? If we're talking about crime, well, I want to live in a safe neighborhood. Maybe it's, I want to walk and not fear crime at night. Or maybe I want my kids to be, you know, if it's fire, I want to know if I call 911, I've got the best trained uh, medical personnel responding. That's, those are the level of deeps. So tell us why is it important to you? And then I'm going to follow up that question with, of the metric results, which are most important to you? And I'm going to ask you to rank them. One through whatever. Why is it important? What we typically see, even though you know we know that each and every one of us are different in some form or fashion, if you live in a community, if you know everything. You know all the challenges. You know all the needs. But would you guys agree? You're recipients of those services. Now, I'm using you know examples of EMS calls and crime, but it could be something a lot smaller than that. It could be you know if you have children, and maybe you know with all that we've gone through in society, there might be a fear of a police officer. Does that impact quality of life? Yes, it does. How can we fix that? What do you expect your chief? What kind of results can address that? Any questions so far? All right. Got to change gears a little bit. The next question is, I'm going to ask you, what activities should the new chief spend the most time doing? Now with this question, I want you to rank those activities. One, but here's a change up. I want you to add a corresponding percentage. What we're trying to do is get your perspective. What do you think the high value activities are of a chief? All of us in our job, I can achieve actually absolutely nothing, but I can look real busy, can I? <laughs> right? We can. But what are the high value activities? We know that these leaders are pulled in a lot of direction, right? A lot of tasks. But what, from your perspective, are those high value activities that they need to focus on? The chief needs to know that because they need to know what can be delegated. Yes, sir. Are you talking about duties that are specific to his office and when he's in the office and administrating, or are you talking about the pulse of the community in general? Well, so. I was a police chief, Mr. Brown was a police chief. Really, from my, sorry, 
from my perspective, uh, a police chief isn't bound by just administrative duties. Hopefully that answers your question because there, a police chief isn't bound by just administrative duties. There were days where I would roll out and I would stop cars. One of his best points was not just what he did while he was in that office, but what he did out in the community working with many of us. Absolutely. He may be assistant city manager now, but I'll always know him as Chief Brown. Me too. Absolutely. And that's the other key piece. It's a chief has a choice depending on what the expectations were. I knew in my community, my expectations, they wouldn't see. So instead of sending my uh, PIOs or community service officers to my HOAs, guess who went? I did. That was the best way that I could meet with as many people in an informal setting. But every city is going to be different in that same thing. Uh, you know, I would go speak at events. Now, from an administrative perspective, is that necessary? No. I mean, administratively, I'm there to work with council to identify and city manager to identify goals or to operate within the goals set by council, to identify those objectives, to <clears throat> make sure that I secure the resources for my troops, to achieve those goals, right? From a purely administrative perspective. But we're talking about leadership too. And we're talking about establishing a tone and establishing a culture. But you're gonna tell me what those activities are. You just gave a good example question there. What's well, a high value activity? I think you saw what I saw as one of the main important factors. Oh yeah, it's always important. We're, you're tasked with leading people, right? And people are going to be motivated in different ways. All of us are motivated in different ways. Some of us, you know, I had a Marine that worked for me. He was motivated by this is my job, I'm going to come in, I'm going to work hard, I'm going to do my job 100%. Chief, I don't care if I see you or not, I'm still going to do my job. But I had others where, you know, there's always that doubt. Hey, can Chief still do a seven-step violator on a traffic stop? You know, uh, is Chief doing fitness testing? You know, so there's, there's those factors too. That's the importance of these groups and your feedback. Tell us, what are the expectations here in Duncan? <clears throat> because the expectations here in Duncanville may be a lot different than Keller, Texas or Westlake, Texas, right? Next question. This is more traditional, but it's important. What are the knowledge, skills, and abilities you're looking for in your next chief? Should they hold certain certifications? You know, are you looking for somebody that went through FBI and A? or other command colleges? Are you looking for a certain level of education? Are you looking for somebody who served in a like city? Are you looking for someone that served in a city with a greater population, the same population? All of those things, this is your more traditional question. But again, be specific. If you answer, well, we want them credential, uh, credential. that doesn't tell me anything. Uh, what kind of credentials? What kind of accomplishments or uh, years of experience? Is it important that, you know, they were command staff prior? There are some agencies that have actually brought people in that had no command staff experience. That was their choice. So, <clears throat> tell us. Let us know. Be specific on that. And then the last question. What are three professional traits you're looking for in your chief. Please don't put tall, dark, and handsome or all around <laughs> the squad. Please don't do that. Uh, again, be specific. A lot of times what I will see on this response, I want a strong leader. What does that mean? What does leadership look, look like for you? Because depend, we're all the sum of our life experiences, right? Anybody ever served in the military in this room? I'm sure there are. Your definition of leadership might be a little bit different than somebody who hasn't served, correct? I would suspect. What branch were you? I was captain in the Army. In the Army. 
And I'm not gonna pick any Marines in here. I always pick on Marines. Marine why? Marine why? They're different in how they view leadership, right? Yes. They're different in how they view teamwork, correct? Still military members, but they're different, just like the Army is different than the Air Force, correct? So we're all the sum of our life experiences. So if I get a response, I want a strong leader, what does that look like for you? A strong leader might be someone who is engaged in the community, somebody who stands in the gap and if we mess up, we fess up, and we move on. Those are leadership traits, right? But what are some others? Be specific. What do you consider? What are the behaviors that make a person a strong leader, as an example? Character traits. You might, you know, maybe, you know, this is where integrity and honesty being up front, leading from the front, all of those things. I mean, so be as specific as you can in these responses. So there's only seven questions. The great thing about the survey, there is a QR code. You can do it on your phone, but there's all, you can copy and paste that link and you can put it on your computer. There is not a limit to character count. There's just not, because I'm going to take all of those inputs and I'm going to analyze all that text and all that writing. And I'm looking for common themes. Yes. And you said we can or encourage to share that? Absolutely. Share it. I would ask if you're sharing, whoever you're sharing with, please feel free to regurgitate what I shared with you all on what we're looking for and the depth that we're looking for on, these, on the responses. Because the old ad, we're only as good as the information you give us, right? So I just want to encourage as many people to engage the process. Because when I go through, I'm going to be looking for, you know, five to seven themes. And those five to seven themes are where we're going to start with the benchmark committees. Are there any questions? Yes. So a human is going to look in our 500 surveys, seven questions. We all use different words. I, that, that, that human's me using some tools. How, how do you collate and get a common theme out of so many words, even though they may be synonyms throughout all of the surveys? How so it's a, word, it's a word analysis tool. Oh, you and, have a tool. Okay. And the, the tool helps me narrow that down. Okay. Mayor? There's no question of the science of your process. We're all aware of that. We're prepared by that. My question goes to the construct of the survey. Because some people, for example, when they read a novel, they can read the last chapter first. But your questions are all consequent. They're sequential. We give something, then the next question relates to the previous question. The next question relates to the previous question. So my question is the construct of the survey. When you go there, do we see all the questions that Right, so it's set up. It changes your perspective on how you answer. You can right. scroll all the way down and see them all before you start answering. Right, but it but it shows one question yeah. at a time, Definitely. so you're not looking at the other. But yes, you can scroll through. Uh, talking about the QR code, if you're on the email list with the city of Duncanville, uh, Alex does a great job. You can click right there on your email, and you've got the both. One clicked up for the fire chief, one for the police chief. And the importance of the questions that were selected, it wasn't just something that I thought of, you know, one night staying at the Holiday Inn Express. Uh, a, lot, a lot of these questions are uh, variations of questions that are going to be asked to the benchmark committee. Because if we're looking for congruency, we have to be in the same ballpark. So... <clears throat> Once we conduct our analysis, I'll start identifying some, I call them headlines, buckets, uh, where, and that's where we start with the benchmark, is, okay, here's our feedback from our surveys. And then we start moving down that direction. What happens at the end of the benchmark, outside of the 30 or 50 page report that it creates, is that we identify superior performance attributes and we have narrative form 
to deeply describe those. Those become our anchors. And I know members of council that went, went through the process, as we were going, you know, going through analyzing things, we reminded, let's go back to our anchors uh, a few times. And what that helps us do is, it's, <coughs> these are big decisions. And we're throwing a lot, you know, there's a lot of data that's gonna be thrown at the city manager to make the right decision. But sometimes we, we all have a tendency where we can get uh, uh, so focused in on one thing that we have to be reminded, okay, let's, let's go back, let's back up, let's go back to our anchors. Here are the support, uh, superior performance attributes. Let's go again. So really, really excited uh, about the uh, process. And, uh, you know, it's uh, really, you know, Again, excited to work with the city. I know Alex indicated this will be posted in the morning. Uh, the surveys will be available through the city website. And I believe an email went out also, is that correct? That also has that survey link. Please share it with your neighbors, with your friends. Uh, the reason, it's a kind of quick turnaround, 8 a.m. So I have enough time to do my analysis so we can stay on track with our schedule to meet with our benchmark on the third. Any other questions? Thank y'all for coming out. I got a comment. Yes, sir. I want you to hear this. Um, I'm a, I understand you got to go through this process. But I'm a firm believer in promoting from within. Mm -hmm. And when we get ready to do this, I hope we realize that we've got an interim police chief interim fire chief that have about 58 years of, of experience. They know the department. Uh, you've got a chief that can vouch for the police chief and there's several others. And I really hope, uh, I know you got to go through the process, but I think we need to give some strong consideration to keep it in the house because there's no learning curve, there's no process, there's no personalities that you have to learn things. I think it would be in our best interest as a city to promote the community. Okay. I was not going to add to that. Well, and I just want you all to know and anybody that views us, I'm not the one that will make that, that decision. I'm going to provide... We're going to blame you. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'll provide the, uh, the data and, and I'll also share this with you. I was... Before I was made chief, I served interim. And probably the best thing for me, because everybody watched me grow up as a cop in that police department. All the boneheaded mistakes I made as a rookie all the way through, as I hit the, the different levels, the best thing that my boss did for me is he opened it up and I had to compete. Because it does a few things. If, if for some, you know, if the choice of the city manager is to go internal versus external, at least that internal candidate like me is going to know that we earned it. And uh, the, that's important, I think, for the community, and I think it's important for the uh, troops. Because, uh, you know, I've, I've seen it operate differently, and when you're a leader in those roles, it's important that you're, legit, you're legitimate. And, uh, and I, you know, I've had a chance to... Uh, I uh, talked with both, you know, both intros and in my time working with you all, and uh, they both seem like really good people and, and, and good leaders, and I've heard a lot of good, a lot of good things, but they also come across as very professional, and I would think that they would want to compete for something and not just have something given to them. Does that make sense? But that, that's just my, my opinion of living through this in my career. Yes, sir. Adding on to that, if we had, and we have had, excellent chiefs of each department for, if they were at least significantly involved in the hiring and promoting of the men and women who served under him or her. And therefore, I think that in and of itself will tell you a whole lot about the abilities 
of that individual, male or female. And I think that's something we should consider and also consider from the standpoint of they have institutional knowledge of this city. And you're absolutely right. That's why what I described with the benchmark and the trimetrics, that only accounts for about a third. The other two pieces are interviews, resume review, credentials, you know, your road. That's what, I'm, where, where did you come from? What have you done? What have you achieved? Whether you're an internal candidate or an external candidate, all that's taken in. What also is considered is as we get, you know, there's gonna be assignments that they're going to have as we receive those applications and resumes. And that's also driven through the benchmark, it creates those questions for us. Uh, so <clears throat> there's the entire process, but what we're talking about with the surveys and the benchmark and the trimetrics, that's only one, one part of the selection process. So I, I would think all of those other factors through the resume review, through the interviews and those things, will take into account. Pardon? Those are important tests, we need to put them on the surface. Absolutely, absolutely. That would probably be a good response, sir, under your knowledge, skills, and abilities question. So, any other comments, questions? Okay. Up on these front tables, what you're going to find are uh, two sheets for fire chief and two sheets for police chief. There is an uh, English version of the survey, and there's also a Spanish version of the survey for each survey. So, depending on whatever your first language is and you're most com comfortable with, you can scan that respective survey. So if you're talking with your neighbors and your friends, do not let uh, language barriers stop them because we've accounted for that. You can find both, both versions and all those versions are available online, correct Alex? Okay. There's no other questions. I'll turn it back over to Mr. Brown. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Wilson. Um, ladies and gentlemen, before we leave, I just want to tell you on behalf of the city of Duncanville, thank you for being here. Um, these are two very, very important hires for the city. Two very, very important hires for the city. When people think about moving to the city of Duncanville, there's really three things they're going to be asking themselves. Is my property value going to go up? <laughs> my children are going to be able to get an education and I'm not going to be safe yeah. and so um, I think you can see why we're excited about having uh, T2 and Mr. Wilson uh, conduct this process uh, we're going to be able to get a lot of information from potential candidates and I will tell you personally I'm excited about being a part of the process um February of 2007, the city of Duncanville gave me an opportunity to fill a career dream of becoming a police chief. And so there's nothing I want to see more than to help hire these two positions because I want that tradition to continue. I believe that we've been very blessed to have good leaders in our respective public safety departments. And so this is a process that we take very seriously. Um, Mr. Finch and I will be having a lot of conversations uh, because we want the best person for the job. We want the best person for the job. It is so very, 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 very important. And so um, as Mr. Wilson indicated, we've had an opportunity to speak with our firefighters. We've had an opportunity to speak with um, our police officers. Uh, we wanted to obviously get our community involved, and we're going to have the benchmark committees. Our first meeting is going to be uh, on Friday, May the 3rd. I will be a part of that benchmark committee. Uh, I would like to think that after 34 years in law enforcement, I have a little knowledge about, about this process. And so, again, I don't want to keep you any longer, ladies and gentlemen. I just want to say thank you. Thank you very much for being here. I appreciate it.